Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm just grabbing up the presentation. So guys, I apologize. Looks like the the bin of the tablet is not working for some reason. So I'm just trying to fix it right now. It might take maybe five minutes or ten minutes. I don't know. Right, just give me some time.
Yes, I fixed it. You guys can see my screen, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Good. So let's we we'll just recap first the DFS coding. Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned in the last lecture, uh, MATLAB has no fighters, has no first in, first out. Okay. So what we have done instead is that we create an array and we just you know model it in a way to behave like a first in first out by using pointers. Okay. I will show you very quick how this array is gonna work. So let's assume this is the array. It has three main columns. The first one is called the ID. And we said that each cell in the array has an ID. If we go very quick here in my tab, we'll start by this cell. I name it as one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I should do all of them because we're gonna go in bits for this session. You, you, you go radially, so you usually go with upper indices and lower indices as well at the same time. Of course, it takes time here, but when we code this, it's just a simple function in MATLAB that do that for you. You don't need to worry about that. So the first is the ID, then the second column is uh, uh, distance from the start node, and the third column is the steps, the exploration steps, how many cells we explore or visited so far, okay? So, and we said that we need two pointers. One of them is the frontier pointer. And as we said, we take, we take a cell, for example, the starting cell, then we explore what's around. The cells that we take from, the, from this array is called the frontier. The cells that we're gonna explore around is called the frontier. And why we call it frontier? Because it should be, the, if, it, if you have a queue, this should be the head of the queue, the frontier point or cell in the queue. The second point, I'm sorry, the second point is, we can say, for example, uh, you know, first, you know, free cell pointer. You, you can call it whatever, okay? It means the pointer that points to the first empty uh, uh, row uh, in the FIFO, okay? Or the empty location in the FIFO, okay? So we, we will start by the starting node. Then we will go further and fill out this uh, array. So we're gonna do some examples together here, just to recap what we did last time. And this research is very important and very famous, and we're gonna use it everywhere, not just in robotics, but everywhere. So the first uh, cells that we're gonna add to this array or FIFO is a starting cell. And the starting cell, as we say here, has an ID of 27. So 27 here, and distance from the start is just zero, and the step is just the zero step. 
Okay. You can also rename the statement one, whatever. It doesn't matter because you have a reference, okay? Okay, and here is the frontier pointer. So the frontier pointer is looking at this, at this one, okay? Now we're gonna explore the cells around the starting point uh, using this priority up, uh, right, left, and down. So we're gonna start by the up. So we're gonna call it uh, one, this means step one. And its ID is 26. And why we add it to the, to the, to the array? Because it's not uh, an obstacle. It's not outside of the map. It's not beyond these walls in here, okay? And it's not visited before. Nobody, no other cell has, has visited one before. Okay, it was not contained in this column here. This column, whenever you have an ID in this column, that means that some frontier visited this cell before. And the distance from the start is just one cell. How we could know this in a professional way, just to take the distance of the frontier, which is zero right now, and add, add one to it. So zero plus one is one. Then we go right, number two. So this is step number two, or exploration step number two. The ID of this guy is 37. And the step is also one because zero plus one is one. Then we go left, three, means step three. And the uh, distance is also one, and the ID is 17 this time, okay? And by the way, in each, once you fill, once you fill uh, an, an, an entry row here, you go to the next row. So this guy is always incrementing. Whenever you uh, fill a cell, it goes to the next one free in the, in the, in the array. You will call it frontier array, okay? So we are, we are now here. And also, uh, yeah, then the fourth, the fourth step is to going down, which is four. So this means step four. And distance is also one. And the ID is 28. Okay, then this guy, this pointer in here, go to the next uh, MBT row in the array. Now we finish exploring the four possible neighbors of the starting node or the current frontier, which is this one. So this guy now will move by one to this. So frontier pointer become here. Let's take now 26. This is our last example. I will not continue on that until we reach the goal. Okay, it should be straightforward. So we're gonna stop with what is 26, this is the 26. We have also four neighbors, we, we have this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Okay, let's start by the top one. The top one is uh, 25, so 25. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sure. The step is five, I'm sorry. The step should be five, so in the years we can write five. Okay, and uh, the ID is 25, and the distance is one plus the distance from the frontier. This is the current frontier 26, so we will add one to the to this uh, to the distance of the frontier. One plus one is two, and obviously it's 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 a two step from the from the start. Okay. Then we go right, right is this guy, so six, six. This is the exploration step, meaning we explore this cell at the step number six. And the ID is 36. And the distance from the start is just one plus the distance of the frontier. The frontier, of the frontier distance is one, so one plus one is also two. Then we go to here, this is seven. And of course, each time, this pointer in here is pointing to this, to the first field location. This is seven. The ID is 16. And the, st the distance from the start is also two, one plus one. Okay. Then we go to this, the down cell, which is 27. And we notice that 27 is, is already in this column. This column is the uh, explored 
cells. And we can call it, uh, it contains the current frontier, previous frontiers, and future frontiers. Okay? Because any cell, any cell we explore, it will be in the future a frontier. Okay? Maybe because we may reach the goal before it. Okay? And so we did, we will not add the start again here. We will not add it. We just end our search and increase our frontier pointer to 37. So we will start from this one. And so on and so forth. Okay? When we gonna stop, we gonna stop when the frontier reaches the goal, which is 25. This is the goal, remember. 25. At this iteration, when we know that the current ID of the current frontier is actually the goal, we're going to stop the search. So the search is, got, is something like uh, an infinite wide loop, okay, in which in each loop, in each iteration, you pick a frontier based on the frontier point, explore the cells around, okay, you exclude the cell if it was already in the first row here, explored it before I need. You exclude it if it's a wall, if it's beyond the boundary of the map, of the map. Okay, on all these conditions, you, you exclude the cell. If it doesn't, if it's not a wall, if, it, if it's not an obstacle, if it's, if it's within the map, and if it's not explored before, you add it to the, to the array, to the first free entry. Okay, based on the point. One note here before we, we go forward is that let's, let's say, uh, let's uh, name this point or whatever. Let's name it uh, free cell pointer or first free cell FFC, something like whatever you call it. Name it FFC. FFC. Okay, FFC point. It's a very bad naming, but let's call it that one. And let's relate it to something we have already in the array. Okay, so when we were here, when the frontier Z was here, for example, and just in the, in the very first beginning, very first start, we explore from 27 to one, this one. And where is this one is located? It is in the second entry or second row of the array, right? Then we explore 37, which is this one. And this was explored on the second step. And what is the location of uh, 37 in the array here? It is in the third row of the array. Okay? So you notice that this is actually, this number actually is uh, representing the row uh, minus one. So the step, the exploration step, is actually is the row minus one of the current entry. Okay, so the current entry, the current entry should be at step plus one. Okay, so for example, if we wanna know where is exactly ID uh, node, uh, node 17, just look at its exploration step and, the, and that one. This is the num this is the row number of of this node 17, which is four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So we actually don't need this pointer. We already have it. Since we keep track of the acceleration steps, we will take this number, this variable, the acceleration steps, and they add one to it, then we gonna know the first three entry point, uh, yes, point in the array. Okay? So we need only one pointer and we will we implicitly know the other from the acceleration step by just adding one. Okay, and this is what what I have done in, in, in the code. Okay, in the MATLAB. Now we should go to the MATLAB coding, and before going and you know, I will recap of course what we have taken before. 
but before delving into the MATLAB, some of you guys has, you know, said that we, did, we are not familiar with MATLAB and stuff, we have questions. So I need your questions for in order, uh, before going into MATLAB, about MATLAB itself. Any one of you has any questions about MATLAB? MATLAB is good now. So two of you have said that they never uh, used MATLAB before. So the good news is, if you never use MATLAB before, uh, with 100%, MATLAB is a very, very easy language. It should be by default in your list of languages because it's very easy, very easy. That's why it's licensed. You can't use it just like any other language because it's very easy, okay? So if you don't have it before, you should have it. You know, I assume that, for example, any employer will assume that you know MATLAB by default. So that's my, you know, my point of view about MATLAB. So uh, I don't know if you read the code that I, that, I, that I sent you, but it should be very straightforward. Okay, usually guys that coding in MATLAB, you know, don't use object-oriented. Of, co of course, you can use it, but you know, really, usually the coding in MATLAB is very straightforward, okay? It's not like any other language. So if you have still some uh, questions about it, some, one of you has sent me email regarding MATLAB. I can't remember who exactly sent this email and asking, but he can, he, has, he is free to discuss right now, or even after a while, okay? So regarding MATLAB license right now, you have, I, I sent an announcement, uh, maybe before the lecture, but I can't remember exactly when, maybe half an hour before the lecture regarding uh, the MATLAB, so how can you use MATLAB? So, I'm sorry, the license of MATLAB, where you can use MATLAB. So as I showed in the announcement, there are three uh, options for you. I'm sorry, two options for you. But one of them is the virtual computer lab. Okay, it will give you access to uh, MATLAB 2016. And they believe me, any MATLAB will suffice, even older versions. Okay, we're not doing any anything, you know, magical or something. No, any any MATLAB will be sufficient for our course. Okay, so I advise you to use a virtual computer lab or any other, you know, uh, source for MATLAB. Okay, but at least at least there are options here, free options, of course, that you can use. Okay, so let's me uh, let me delve into the uh, the coding. Let us. Okay, so we said that there is uh, two uh, files. The first file is just uh, like a main function, okay, that will call the, you know, the function that, that has or, or contains the actual coding of the first search, okay? We define in this, in this, in this file basically the Professor? map. Yes. Uh, we don't see the MATLAB, oh, we just see your okay. desktop. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry. No, I'm that's just... cool. So let me share another screen. Okay. Is 
this is number three. Okay, you can see now? Yes, I see it now. Yes, so we define here the map. And for this example, we have uh, a map of 10 columns, five, I'm sorry, 10 rows and five cells. We initialize it basically to zero means, zero means here free, but then we assign the obstacles. So we define the obstacles, okay? These are the location of the obstacles. This will be once or true. So false mean free, true mean obstacle. Okay, we define the starting node and the goal node. Although the goal node here is not in that location, it sh should be in here, not that one, it should be in that one. Okay, and as we said, there is, you know, uh, a GUI function that we created in MATLAB to help us see what's going on behind the scene, okay? In each exploration step, we take a frontier, we mark it with some color. Then whenever we explore a cell around, we mark it with another color. So we know that this is a frontier. These are the cells explored, okay? Until we reach the goal. And this is basically the goal and what, what it does. So the, the function that has a bit first search needs the form for information from me needs the map, the starting coordinate and the goal coordinate. It's a column and the row, of course. Here's the coordinate is just the column number and the row number. And MATLAB doesn't start from zero. It does start from one. It's not like C++, for example. So there is no, for if you have an array called X, there is no X of zero. There is X of one. The first element is at location one, not zero. Okay, and it also needs from you a variable. It's like a Boolean function, true or false, that tells is a function whether it can draw your progress or not. Okay, and here is the function itself. Okay, uh, as as we mentioned in the last lecture, there are some fields that needs uh, me to complete it. So you have the basic structure, but you just need to fill in some parts of the code. Okay. Okay, this is related to the uh, GUI. And I said that just in basic words, uh, we have we we have some color, we're gonna use some colors. Okay, or it's a GUI uh, software that, or GUI coding that we put in this in this uh, program needs some colors and each color has a code, okay? And this is the way we add or we define the colors for the GUI software or the GUI, I'm sorry, the GUI coding or programming here. So we have basically seven colors. We're gonna use seven colors. We're gonna use uh, black, I'm sorry, white first, which is one, one, one. What is one, one, one? It's basically the uh, red, green, blue components of the, of the color. So we can construct any color from the, these three basic colors. Okay, so white is just one, one, one. Black is, no, is you know, no color, you know, not any one of them, so zero, zero, zero. Red is, of course, one, zero, zero, because we only one component here. Blue is the opposite, it should be zero, zero, one. And degree is zero, one, zero, and yellow is one, one, zero. So if you mix red and the green, you get yellow. And the gray is just, you know, something in between the white and the black. So the white is one, 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 the black is zero, zero, zero. So the gray is half, half, half. And we're gonna use the gray for the shortest back which is your assignment. And as I will explain in this, at the end of, of the coding. So you're gonna code some part of the code that I will just left a blank for you. And to use the GUI, okay, you should mark any cell on the route from the start to the destination using the gray. Okay. And here is the function that takes this um, uh, array and, you know, assigns a color map so whenever a GUI is called, the GUI code is called, 
it will refer to this by default to, to draw uh, the array or the image using the colors in this in this array here. Okay. And I said you need not to worry about this. If the code is there, we're gonna use it a lot, so just hold it there. Okay, the first step we have done is related to the graphics, okay, or the GUI that we implemented, which is constructing a map, okay, in which we're gonna draw using our GUI. The GUI needs an array, okay, and this array should be filled with, you know, numbers relate to these uh, colors here. So for example, if uh, a cell in that array has one, so one is the first element, or, or we point to the first element in C map, which is white. So the GUI will draw this cell with white. If the array that you're gonna draw has a cell that contains, for example, three, then the GUI will draw the cell using red, okay? So what is basically uh, this map, this new map, okay? It's just basically the same input map, exactly the same, okay? But with different, you know, element, uh, element, uh, element entries to reflect the coloring, okay? So basically, it has the same rows and the same columns. So what are the columns and the rows of input map? We can get them using very simple, you know, MATLAB function called size. This size function it, it, it brings back, it's a function that takes a, an array and reflects back its number of columns and the number of rows in an array, okay? Which is very easy. So we initialize this map to zeros. And of course, there is no color here called zero because we start, as I said, we, we start by one, okay? So we're gonna put some values afterwards. First, we're gonna assign white to the, uh, to the free cells. How we gonna know the white? There is another, you know, uh, feature in MATLAB. You can have uh, an array the same size of another array as input, okay, like f of x. Then this this uh, this symbol code here will look at the ones, and whenever it find a true or one, it will put one in it. Here we make inversion. This is a tilde here means inversion, so it will invert. And remember, this input map has ones or true as uh, obstacles and it has zero at the free cells. So it will invert them. So it will have zero at the obstacles and uh, true at the free cells. So whenever we find that true, we will put a one in our new constructed array. Okay. Now, so now we mark it the free cells with white because white is number one here. We gonna mark the obstacle with black, number two. So we just bought the input array as it is without any inverting, because we know an input array any zero means the free cells, and true means or four, uh, true yes means uh, obstacle. So whenever it finds one here, it puts in the corresponding uh, element in the array or the map array, we put two. So this will be uh, an obstacle. Why two? Because two is black. Okay. We're gonna mark the starting point using yellow. And as I said last lecture, it is really convenient to use the ID, not the coordinates. You can use the coordinates. You can say here, for example, map of, you know, uh, start node of one, which is a row number, uh, comma, start, you can write, write like, let me write it for you. You can say something like this, map of, Start coord. Yes, we have it here. Equal to five. You can do it in that way. 
This means map of this row, this column, this cell, I mean, both five in it. You can do it in that way. But it's more convenient. So it says equally. So it's more convenient to use the ID. The ID is just one number. So we're going to say that this is the function that gives you the ID based on the row coordinate, the column coordinate, and the size of the array. Okay, how many size of the, remember size of the array will give you number of rows, number of columns. So the MATLAB here will know the number of rows and the number of columns. Then he gonna apply some very simple equation to give you the ID. Okay. And the fun this function is called subscript to index or ID. Okay, subscript here is the coordinate, column, uh, row, column, and uh, I'm sorry, the row, and the, the row number and the column number. And the index is just the ID. Okay, and in our case here, the starting unit is at 27. Look, this is 27. If we apply the equation, it's very simple. Column index, which is uh, uh, seven, one to seven, uh, minus one, I'm sorry, the column index is three. So three minus one multiplied by the row size. How many rows? You have 10 rows. So multiplied by 10 plus the row index and the row index is seven. So this will give you 27. Okay. So we're gonna say directly map of start node equal to five. Instead of doing such, you know, very lengthy stuff. And why five? Because five is zero. The goal node, you will do the same. Get the ID, then assign six to it, and six is the green, I think. Or, I'm sorry, gray. I'm sorry. Where is six? One, two, three, four. I'm sorry. The goal node is, uh, I just mix it. So one, two, three, four, five. So five and six in here. So this is five green. I'm sorry, ah, the starting loop is green and the goal is a goal is yellow, it's the opposite. I just mix it there, okay? The goal is yellow, that's right. I'm sorry, I mix it there, yes. So this is green, the start is green and the goal is yellow. Then we make a variable here, we create a variable here to track the distance from the start. And remember, our first node is always the starting point, or the starting node. So the distance from the start is just zero. And the number of steps explored, since we didn't explore anything, so the steps is zero. And here we create our array that will behave, or we will uh, you know, deal with it as a five. And I name it with a funny name. Frontier distance step. And remember, you have three columns in this, in this array. Okay. Let me grab you. Three columns. The first one is the frontier ID. Second one is the distance from the start. Third is the step. So you can just easily know from the name of your array which column is referring to which. Okay. And I initialize it to infinite. And how many uh, how many elements should be in that array? That array should be capable of holding all our cells. Okay. How many cells we have here? We have here ten multiplied by five, or the number of rows multiplied by the number of columns. And how many columns we should have here? We should have three based on that example that I just make with you. But as I said, there is an assignment, and the assignment you're gonna you're gonna use the fourth column in order to construct the shortcut mm -hmm. map. So I just made it four, and the fourth column right now will be will just have infinite. And MATLAB, not like any other language, has a symbol for the infinity. Okay, INF. This means infinite. Okay. Or infinity in our map which is really cool stuff. So the first row in that 
FIFO or array is basically will be filled with the information of the starting point. The start node ID, distance from the start, which is zero, and the step, which is zero. And the fourth one is infinite. And when you go and do the your homework, keep it infinite. You will not use that. You, will, you shouldn't. You shouldn't change this. If you try to change it, then there is a mistake with your uh, with your solution. Okay, probably. I'm not sure, but it should be it should be a, it should be a mistake. We shouldn't use it. And we need the frontier pointer. And the frontier pointer right now is just the pointing at the first entry, or the first row, which has a starting node. Very nice. And then we have the infinite loop. Okay. And whenever I have some error, you will have this, you know, underlined yellow or red stuff. And why we have errors right now? Because as I say, this is a structure and there are some fields that is not complete. We should complete it or we, should, we will complete it together right now. Okay. We started by the drawing. Okay. So, I'm here just emphasizing that the start node and the go node is, is, is still yellow and, is, and the green or green and yellow, okay? And because maybe uh, deep down in the code, in the while loop, you may change them. So here you just undo what you have done mistakenly if you did a mistake uh, during the while loop, okay? As you will see, we'll use this drawing function again. So we may change the coding, we may change by mistake the yellow and the green uh, colors for the starting and the going node. So we just need make, make make sure that if we even change them, we go back to our original settings. We, we're gonna show all, all, all the time the GUI with yellow and green for the start and the going locations. Then we are drawing. And before we draw, we, we check this condition. Remember, I, we made a condition, this variable, this Boolean variable that says that if you want to draw, make it true. If you don't want to, true, uh, to draw, make me false. And we make it true. So we're gonna draw, okay? And here is uh, the magical command or magical function that turns a map, an array into, uh, into an image, okay? And just discard uh, any other, you know, any other information or any other detail. We, know, we are not gonna use them. We may use this both. Both means before drawing any map, how much time you want me to to wait. So you can make it fast drawing or slow drawing. Okay, based on your convenience. But of course, if you do if you do it slow uh, in a slow motion, we can say, then you're gonna uh, consume a lot of time in, in processing your in your code. Okay, so make it fast in the beginning, going to one second. Then if you have some mistake and you want to debug it, then make it, for example, one second. So you can clearly show uh, in your GUI what's going in exactly in a very slow manner to detect the errors that you have, if you have. So in the beginning, in the loop, we should read the frontier node which is pointed to using our frontier pointer. And we're gonna need first the ID of this frontier and the ID where it is. It should be in the row pointed by the frontier, which is number one right now. And is the first element or the first uh, or column one in that, in that row. So the frontier is now looking or pointing at this location. And this is a uh, column one and we have 27. Okay, and when I was uh, explaining here, I said that we will stop when the frontier pointer reaches 25 here, because 25 is the goal or whatever the goal way, okay, in the map. So whenever the frontier is the goal, the frontier node is the goal, we're gonna stop. We're gonna break the infinite loop. That means we have enough exploration to make the shortest path or construct the shortest path between the start and the goal. 
Okay, now for the GUI also, this is not very difficult to search. Okay, we're gonna put or specify a color for the current frontier. Okay, and we choose red for that purpose. You can, of course, you choose whatever color you want. Okay, so we not just need here to fill in the array in the map with the color. Uh, that's that represent uh, red for the number that represent red. Where is red here? Red is number three. So just put here three. So whenever the GUI draws a cell with red, that means that it's currently the algorithm is exploring around this frontier cell. Now we want to explore around this frontier cell. Any cell has, you know, by default, four neighbors, up, down, right, and left. It's easier now to, uh, to explore using the, uh, the column and the row indices of the, of the node, okay? Because if it's up, just, decrease the, the rows by one. If it's down, increase the rows by one. If but at the same at the same column. If it's right, increase the column by one at the same row. If it's left, in, decrease the column index by one and you have the same row as well as the frontier. So here we gonna convert the ID, the frontier ID into ING. We're gonna know it's row and the column. So this is a very, you know, another function which is just the opposite of the first function here that we show, this one, sub to n. This is the opposite. It, do, it does exactly the opposite. So this will uh, convert an index, an ID, to subscript or the column and row. What it does, what it, what it takes, it takes the size of the map it takes the number of rows and the number of columns as a vector, okay? And the ID, just one number. What is the ID? It is located in the frontier node. Very simple, okay? Okay, now let's explore. We have four possible neighbors. So I'm gonna make a for loop from one to four, and I will loop over these neighbors, n for neighbor. So let's assume, uh, based on our priority, we go up, then down, I'm sorry, then right, then left, then down. So when n equals, we assume that when n equal to one, we explore up. So what are the row and the column of the node just above me? So let's go here, for example. So this is the, for example, the start, the, this is the current frontier. The node that is above me, it has the same column. So the column here is equal to J with no change. And remember J is the column index of the frontier. But how about the row of this cell? This is the row just above me, before me. So if the row here is seven, this should be six. Or basically I minus one, okay? Because I is the row index of the current frontier. Good. If I wanna go right at oh, any point. Yes, yes, Clark. Uh, just a quick question on, when you used it I uh, comma J, like that 2D array, is, are you making it so you're instantiating just I is equal to size of map and J is equal to frontier node? Is that just what it's it's doing? No, you, you mean this line, right? Yes, that line right there on line Good. 97. Good. So let's do a very nice example in here. So let me say that I, J equal to index, Two sub 
here we have size of <coughs> and I'm gonna create a map okay for example I'm sorry uh, an array any array like for example one two three four so we have here an array that has two rows okay the first row has one and two. The second row has three and four. And of course, has also two columns, okay? So let's, you know, name these or put IDs for this row in the way MATLAB does. So this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, okay? Good, so, okay. Let's say that I want to uh, put the ID. Oh. Yes. I want to know the ID. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to know the column and the row of this node, node, num node four here, which is four. Okay. We know that this should be in the uh, column number two and row number two as well. And what, but we have only the ID, we know the ID, we don't know the column, we know, we want to know them. What is the ID of this node? Four. It is, it is four, right? So we're going to put here four. And MATLAB will give us the magic. So this is the row, this is the column. Let's repeat it with another, another number. Okay, let's assume that I want to know the column and the row indices of this uh, of this node here. But I know only the ID of this node. And what is the ID of this node? Let's do it. Two. One, two, yes, it's two. And so the row is number two. Yes, it's number two. This is second row. And it's the first column as one. So J is equal to one. Okay. okay that, make, that makes sense, thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So at, e at n equal to two, which is the second iteration, okay, I should explore my right. So this is my right in here. My right is in the same row as me, as a frontier. And the frontier has a row of equal to i. But the column here is equal to the column of the frontier plus one. What is the column of the frontier? It's j and the plus one. Okay. Now, when, the, when n equal to three, this is the left. This is the exploration of left, which is this guy. This guy again has the same row as me, as me which is, I'm assuming I am the frontier right now. And I have a row of i, but it's in a previous column than me. So it's a column is just my column minus one, j minus one. Let's explore now the cell just, you know, down of me or below me, which is this one. This has the same column as the frontier. So here is j. But it has, you know, a row plus one. So it equal to its row is just my row plus one. So this is row, for example, seven, this is eight. So I plus one. Okay. And for you, for home of you that doesn't know MATLAB or that you, you know, experience with MATLAB before, semicolon here is optional. Okay. I can just have once, uh, I can for example, have no semicolons. But if you wanna combine two sentences in the same line, you should put the semicolon, okay? So the MATLAB can differentiate between the two statements. Oops. Okay, so we have here two separate statements. Assign J to column and assign I minus one to row. Two statements in the same, in the same uh, uh, line. So you must you must separate with the semicolon. But for the second one, you can 
we can remove it. But what happens if I remove a semicolon from a MATLAB line? It's still correct it's line. But what will happen? It's showing a command window. Right, right. So if you if you didn't, you know, put the semicolon, whenever the MATLAB uh, executes that line, which is not line, this is statement, column equal to J, it will write it here. It will write column is equal to J. Okay. So, and of course, this will take time from the processing because now MATLAB needs to take this value, communicate to the screen, to the monitor, and put it on the screen, you know, maybe communicating with the GPU, or maybe. So, all such a processing will delay your program. And I see uh, in my life a guy, uh, I'm a friend of mine, his, 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 uh, he ran his code maybe for, for one or two days with no solution. He didn't reach the solution. And his only problem was just the, uh, the semicolon because each, each loop, the semicolon, I'm um, sorry, the MATLAB was printing every single answer he has for any variable, for any statement to the screen, to the, to the uh, here in this, in this window. In the, uh, yes, in this window. And this takes a lot of time. Okay, when we add the semicolons, in no time he reached the, 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 I mean the code finished and give, his, give him the answer. Okay, but it's optional because you can debug your code using this. You can, you, for example, track some variable, whatever, it's optional for you. Okay, so now we finished, okay, this uh, assignment for the row and the column for the possible, for our four possible neighbors. Guys, I need just uh, five minutes. I got a, a very important call. I'm very sorry for this, okay? Just five minutes, or maybe less than five minutes, and I will go back, okay? I will stay here, I just pick the phone, okay? So I will just mute myself and pick this phone, okay? This is really strange. Where is this? Hello? So I'm back here.
Hey, Professor, can you explain something to me? Yes, you are Genesis, right? Uh, Genesis, yeah. Yeah, can you explain again why up is I minus one? Okay, 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 we'll do that. Thank you. But please don't, because I can't see, the, you know, uh, for some reason here, I can't see the chat, okay? <laughs> Whenever I stop sharing the screen, I can't see it. Okay. So please just stop me, you know, there is no problem at all. Just stop me, you know, hey, I want to know this. And I will, I will answer you. I will answer you. Okay. So here is asking why I plus one and I plus one. Okay, for up and down, right? Okay. Let me share mm -hmm. my screen again. This zoom is really stupid. Okay. Let's let's go here for example. Let's leave leave MATLAB alone. Let's let's do in here. So assume that I am in that in that in that in uh, this is my frontier right now. Okay. And this frontier has uh, a row called I. Okay. And a column equal J. So this column here is J, and this row here is I. Of course, in that, in that particular example, you can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So in that particular example, the row is seven and the column is three. Okay, but I will call this seven I, and I will call this uh, three column, C-O-L. Okay, just to generalize this, the stuff. Let's start by the down one. Okay, for the down cell here, this cell is at what column and what row? It has the same row, three. So the column of four, is this node? I'm sorry, yeah, this node, whatever is it, uh, has a column exactly equal to the column of S. And we call the column of S column, C O L. Oh, I'm sorry, J. I'm sorry, J, J. Mm -hmm. J. And I am calling the column of this node COL, column. So COL here is equal to J. Both are three. Again, the column of this node is three, and I call it J. The column of this node, I call it col, COL, and it's also three. So basically, when I explore this, I will set column to J. COL equal to J. Now for the I. For the row. The row of this node, I call it I, and it's equal to seven. Okay? The row of this node, I will call it row R O W, okay. And in this in this case, it's eight. And what's the relation between eight and the seven? Eight is equal to seven plus one, okay. okay. Which is now you got it. Let's yeah. do it again for the upper node, the above node. This node again, I will call it's a column C O L. And in that case, CON is equal to three, exactly equal to the column of the frontier node S, J. So CON equal to J. Now for the row. The row of that, of that node is the six. This is number six. If you go from up to down, one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy is seven. So the above node has uh, a row which I call row, R-O-W, equal to this row, which is I, minus one. Seven minus one is equal to six. Okay, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Professor. Okay, so let's continue now. So for each uh, iteration here, we'll pick uh, one of the neighbors, starting by neighbor one. And when I add N equal to one or neighbor one, this means I am up. I'm here, for example. 
before anything, when I take a node and I explore it, I should be sure this node is inside the map, is not outside the map. It's not an obstacle. It's not one of those black stuff, black cells. And it's not explored before, just to save time. But if it's, if it's explored, why to explore it again? Okay? So, so I must be sure of these three conditions. Let's start by uh, the easiest condition, which is checking if this neighbor is inside the map. Okay? If it's not inside the map, for example, if I am here, for example, if this is a frontier right now, so this node, in, of course, there is no node outside the map. If I just, you know, exploring is above me, there is no above of me. I'm, I'm outside the map. Then I will just skip this, this node and go to another neighbor. Okay? So to do that, to be sure that this cell is inside the map, its row should be, its row index should be from one to five. Right? I'm sorry, from one to 10. Because the row, any, any cell here has the row from one to 10. And its column should be from one to five because basically any cell in this map here has a column index from one to five. Okay? So the row index, and as I say, ROW is, uh, is the name of the row of my neighbor now, okay? This is just a variable that relates to the row index of the neighbor that I'm currently exploring. This row should be, uh, or should be, of course, between one, one and ten. So I will continue, meaning, you know, just to go to the another neighbor and skip other exploration if this is outside. Outside means the row is less than one, or, and this is a or in MATLAB, for conditional, logical condition, or larger than 10. This is very valid till this moment. But there is a problem here. If I keep it like in that, that way with 10, that means it will not be, uh, this code will not be used if some with other maps with rows larger than 10. If I have, for example, a map with 20 rows, I can't use this code anymore. So we need to know, uh, we need to put here uh, rows, let me write it, of map. Of course, this is wrong, but I will, I will change it right now. How can, we how can we know the rows of the map? Okay, let's go back and put this function in here. You remember this function size? Where is it? Yes, it's in here. Size, or, or it's in here, that's much better. Yeah. So input map, remember it's just the map, but with only true or false, okay? This function here in MATLAB, size of whatever array, will give you the number of rows and the number of columns, okay? The number of rows is the first element, and the number of column is the second element, okay? So what I will write here, a very simple stuff, size of map and one. Okay, this means return it to me, not all the two elements, the columns and the rows and the column, only the rows. Okay, only the rows. Uh, professor? Yes. Why is it row less than one? Shouldn't it be greater than one? Yes, that's right. Now I'm checking if it's wrong. It is the opposite. You can do it in, the, in two ways. You can check if it's right, or you can check if it's wrong. Uh, and okay. if, it's, if it's wrong, then you make a continue, you, you, you skip all of this, and you go back to the, to the loop to, take, to, to explore another neighbor. You can do both in, in both ways, whatever you choose. I choose here, I think this is easier. The, you know, the opposite way. So if you check if it's, if it's outside, 
Okay, if it's outside, just skip the rest of the loop and go back to the beginning of the loop. Okay. Now we will do the same for the columns. If the column again is less than one or larger than the number of columns in map, and what is the number of columns in map? Which is five. If I write five here, this code will be only valid for this kind of map or for this map with five columns or any map with five columns. But if I do it in a generic way like this, size of map and two, this will, so this function now will return only the second uh, element, which is a number of columns. Okay? So this MATLAB will, will, will translate this into five in that example, and will translate that in uh, 10 in that example. And we can do for any few that doesn't, you know, like this, let's do it with another example in here in the command window. So let's assume that we have an array, for example, one, again, one, two, three, and four. This array, I'm sorry, it's, yeah. This will differentiate between the rows of any matrix or array. Okay, let's do that way. Size of this, of course, is two by two, right? Now, let's do, if I want to know only the number of rows, just to put one. If I want to know the number of columns, put two. Okay, very nice. For, in, for any of you that, you know, maybe not convinced because both are equal, let's add another row here. So let's add, for example, five and six. Okay, again, the number of columns. The number of columns here is the same, two but the number of rows three in that example. Very convenient. MATLAB is really very convenient. Okay, it's just a pain for any other language or many, many languages, you know, to know how many uh, columns and how many, you know, rows in, in any array that you are dealing with. Okay, but think MATLAB is very simple. You just need to code in it so and by the time, in very little time, okay, you will you will gain a lot of information and a lot of tricks about uh, about it, and you will code in very efficient way. Okay, good. So if I found myself outside the map, I will just continue. I will skip all the rest of the loop and go back here for another n, okay, to explore another you know node or cell around. It. So this was the first condition. Let's, let's explore the second condition. The second condition is that this node should be, shouldn't, shouldn't be explored before. Okay? If it's explored before, that means it should be in that column in here, in the first column of the frontier array. Okay? So I also should skip the rest of the uh, processing. If I find this uh, ID or uh, the, my, the neighbor, they already explored before. Again, it's really easy to deal with uh, to in that, in that, in that particular uh, condition. It's easier to use the index. So we know the row and the column of the neighbor. So we're gonna get the index using sub two indices. What we need here, size of map. We need the row and the column coordinates. So that will give us the neighbor ID. So for example, if, I, if this is my frontier node and I am here, this is my neighbor right now. If I put six, which is the row number, Three, which is the column number of this of this of this node, this will give me 26. The node ID of that node. Okay. Now I will get, I, will, I uh, I'm gonna use another MATLAB trick, which is extracting one per column from the array, and this is very easy stuff. 
So we want to search only in that column. We don't care about these two columns. Okay, we want to search for our IT in that column in here. So basically, you're going to do that. You're going to... Uh, so this is our array here. We're going to just copy and paste. This guy here, this vector should uh, should have the first column of the of our array. This is our array, and I wanna only the first column of it. I wanna all uh, all uh, the entries of column one. All the entries. This means all the entries of column one. So with this here, what's gonna happen is that frontier column for, for this example will have 27, 26, 37, 17, 28, 25, 16, 16, 36 and 16. Okay, very simple stuff. So after having the all the first column of your uh, of your array of your FIFO. Okay, so it's not a FIFO we are dealing with as a FIFO, but it's not a FIFO in real world. Okay, we have now the first call. Now we're gonna search inside this first call. You can do for loop, for example, you know, all such headache stuff, but again, MATLAB has its own, you know, trick to do that with using this function called any. So this any here takes the array and puts the array here the array that you want to search in it. And in that location, you put the element that you want to search for it in that array frontier code. What we're going to search for, we're going to search for neighbor. So for example, again, if the neighbor now is 17, OK? And I have now this column in here inside this frontier column. So, uh, and I'm saying in here, if, if uh, is there any element in frontier column equal to 70? If the answer is yes, then of course skip. This means that this cell explored before, and you should skip all of that, the remainder of the loop, and go back and pick another uh, neighbor to explore. Okay. Mark, you have a question? Uh, no. Okay. Your mic is, yeah, it's not, it's not muted, so I thought you have a question. Okay, good. So if it, if, if there is uh, uh, an entry in the frontier column, which, which has the IDs of all the cells that we explored so far, okay, then we're gonna continue, we're gonna skip the rest of the loop and go back and choose another one. Finally, the third condition, okay, we're gonna check, we must check if this cell is barrier or not. And we do that in many, you can do it in many ways. So, for example, we know that input map, our input map, this one in here, this array, Okay, this array, if any element in this array is one, this is an obstacle. If the element is zero or false, this is a free set. So you can do it in that way. You can say that input map of neighbor, remember you have the ID, you don't have to make it row and column, you have already the ID, you get it from this step in here. You don't need to do it again. And you can do it in the other way. If you don't like this at all, so you can do it in that way, which is really, uh, I don't like, but anyways, so you can do it in that way. Row, column. You can write here row and column. You can do it in that way, okay? I will not do that, I will just, 
do it in the other com more convenient way. Okay. You can also, since you have an equivalent map, which you call map, which has the colors, and you know that the if a bar if if a cell is a barrier, then its color will be black, which is two. So you can say that if uh, I'm sorry, here is uh, it's equal to if input map, yeah, just like this is true. Yeah, if it's input map uh, of neighbor is true, it's just uh, just to continue. Because neighbor itself has true or false. So you can you, you just say it like this. You don't have to do equal, equal, one, or equal, equal, zero. Okay? You can, again, you do it another way. You can say that, yeah, it's in here. You can say if map of neighbor equal, equal to, that mean if the cell uh, of, the, of this ID, of which is neighbor, is equal to two mean, means the black, then this is a barrier, then just skip the rest of the loop and go back and pick another, you know, uh, neighbor proxy block. Okay. Once your, your uh, our neighbor passes all these three conditions, okay, means it's a, it's a cell inside the map, it's explored before, then it's a candidate to be a frontier in the future, okay? It's a, a cell that we might explore in the future. So it might be a, a frontier in the future. So we must put it in the FIFO, okay? Good. So to put in, to put in the, remember now, if we are exploring S, so the step is zero, okay? So you should, increase this by one because the current neighbor here was explored at step uh, plus one so for example if we are in here if we are this is a frontier and we are exploring this one with the frontier the step was zero so we explore this as one which is zero plus one so you should increment the step by one okay and we should now store this uh, cell, which might be explored in the future and be become a frontier in our FIFO. Okay, and as I explained here in that example, these numbers in here, which is a step, is actually equal to the number of row minus one. So if we want to know at which row we should put our new node, the node that we just explored, the neighbor that we just explored, just increase the step by one. Okay, so first I will put the ID of this node. So this is a frontier uh, array, frontier distance step. So in the first element of, of the current row, which is step plus, plus one, first element, I should put the ID, which is neighbor. And in the second entry, I should put the uh, distance. The distance from, from the start is just equal to the distance of my frontier plus one. So what is the distance of my frontier? So the distance of my frontier is actually, so is at frontier pointer. Where is the frontier pointer? This guy, yeah. If I want to know any information about the frontier, my frontier, the current frontier, okay, I should point to the current frontier, which is pointed to by the frontier pointer. And where is the distance is located? It is located at, at, at uh, element number two in the in the row of my frontier or the current frontier. Okay, so this will go for example. If we are exploring here at this cell, this will go at that location because the frontier now is going to, to the start with one. We'll take this value, add one to it. We didn't add the one yet, so let's add it. And this will be my distance from the start. Okay, 
So for example, again, this one is zero. So go bring this, bring this zero, add one to it and put it here. So it will, it will be one. So now I know for this neighbor, its ID, I know its distance from the start. And finally, it's a step. What it's a step? It's a step. That's it, because we already incremented it. Okay? So let's check, for example, this value one here, which is 26, was explored at step one. And remember, when we add start, start is zero, so we increase one to it here, so it become one. Okay, its distance is 26, and all these three information was bought in one, two, three ends. And here is the fourth entry of the row. And as I said, you should now fill something in here instead of, instead of infinity so that you can construct the shortest path between the start and the goal. Okay, that's it, guys. So we have finished the core of Brett's first search. The rest of the loop is just a drawing and go. Okay, here again, I am just making sure that I didn't change the yellow and the green, you know, colors of my start and the goal. No, just rechecking them. Okay. So uh, any node that I'm gonna explore, I will mark it as red. Remember, we mark it the start by, I think, yellow. We mark it the goal by green or the opposite, doesn't matter, but using one of these two colors. We mark it the frontier using red. So whenever you see the, the GUI giving you a cell with a red, this means that we are now currently exploring this frontier or this cell, this red cell, is the frontier that we are exploring right now. Now we want to mark the cells that we explore from this red frontier, okay? The current cells. So we got about four in this frontier. And four is blue, so we will mark them with blue, okay? So whenever you see a cell that goes red, you will instantly see the cells around up, down, upper, right, left, down, with blue, okay? And then draw the GUI, draw the current, uh, the current cell. If, if it passes through these, these three conditions, you will, you will see, based on that drawing, you will see a blue, a white cell that goes to blue. Okay. And this is the end of the for loop, of exploring the four uh, neighbors of the frontier. If you, if you finish the for loop, that means that you explored all the possible neighbors, all the possible four neighbors, okay? That means we, we finished exploring the current frontier. So we must go and explore the next frontier. So we must update the frontier pointer by one or increment the frontier pointer by one. So what I want gonna do here is just frontier pointer equal to frontier pointer plus one. Add one to increment it by one. So it will point to the next frontier. Okay. One last thing. Okay, what if there is no possible route between the start and the end location or the goal location? That's a possibility. For example, here, if the goal, let's assume even with this goal, let's say, so this is the start, this is the goal, and all these five cells in here, are all black. The breadth first search will, will explore, by the way, okay? But we'll explore only, you know, under this black wall. We'll explore all these, all these cells, okay? 
and you will, you know, point to each one of those frontiers. But when you reach the last frontier, okay, and explore it, then you will find yourself uh, not exploring anything because usually you will have all the, you know, neighboring cells explored before or obstacle or, or out of the array. And there is nothing to put in the array. The bottom line is, if the frontier pointer, okay, is pointing to a row, and this row has nothing in it, has the default value inside this array, which is infinite, as we assign it when we make the initialization, that means that you reach it the end of the exploration that you can do and you couldn't find the goal. Okay? So I'm not sure if I did it right, but you should do it yourself. So you won't uh, create your own map and just put here five, you know, five, uh, five black cells, you know, five row, five obstacles. You will find yourself with a frontier uh, array that will not have the goal in it. You will not explore the goal uh, in any of your iterations, okay? And how we can know that we cannot do more and there is no route between the start and the goal if you find that the frontier pointer is pointing to a row with infinite values in it, infinite in the first entry, infinite in the second entry, infinite in the third and the fourth, okay? So we also will break the loop if we find that uh, the frontier pointer is pointing to a row with infinite values. So we're gonna check that, make that a check. So take the Frontier Array or Frontier FIFO and we check the new Frontier node if it's infinite or not. And where is the Frontier node? Is at location number one in the row. If it's equal to infinite and remember, you have something called the infinite in MATLAB, which is just the infinite value in mathematics and it's written in that way, I capital N small, F small, then break, okay? So that's it, guys. This is the Brits first search, but it's only the first step, which is the acceleration. After breaking the while loop, I mean, becoming in that location now in the program, you have finished exploring. You might have find the goal or you might not, or you might uh, end up with uh, without finding the goal. I mean, you may break the loop using two conditions. The first one, which you did in the beginning here, break the loop if the front, if the current frontier node is the goal. And another possibility for breaking up the loop is here: break the loop if the current frontier pointer is pointing to an infinite values, invalid node numbers, which means nothing in here. Okay. The second part of the breadth first search is constructing the shortest path. Okay. And you have two possibilities. You have number one, there is a path, there is no path, which means that the current frontier pointer is pointing to an infinite value. Here is, I'm sorry, we should put one here, okay? I'm just repeating this condition. So you, you are saying here, what was the last thing the frontier pointer was pointing at? If it was infinite, then the route array is just an empty array, there is no route. This means there is no route. Else, do that. What is that? 
is constructing the shortest band, which I will leave it for you as an assignment, okay? And just one little detail you should do, mark any node in the path between the start and the goal, mark it with gray. So whenever you draw this, and this is a drawing code, it will draw the shortest path using the gray, okay? So let's have an example. I have here uh, an already made example. This is my example in here. So let's run it and see. So look guys, any node we explore has become red. And here is the shortest path in, in gray. Any cell in the shortest path, mark it with gray, which is eight in the color map array, okay? You may play with the, uh, you know, the drawing time. So for example, let's make a pose here, a big pose, one second, for example, let's make it one. So we can see with the slow motion what's happening. So this is the first node, you know, this is the frontier, current frontier, current frontier, current frontier. Around the front, you see, guys, a frontier in red, then some nodes in blue. Frontier in red, some nodes in blue. Frontier in red, some nodes in blue. Until finally, maybe after, you know, yes, it should be very quick. Yes, until you construct the band. And I'm also giving you many examples because you may have. You know, you may some, make some code, but only valid for some example. By chip, by luck, it works. So I'm giving you also some, some other examples. So let's try some of them also. Let's change the goal to another location, for example. So the goal is here, it is the yellow one. And why it's slow motion? Because I make the balls one second. Look, this is the shortest band. Let's play with another example. Let's let's have this example. It's a completely different map. Oops, uh, I did it. It's very easy in, 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 in MATLAB, just uncomment or comment. Very easy. It's very dumb. So it reaches the goal, maybe, you know, and maybe if it takes, for example, two minutes, maybe after, you know, 90 seconds, it reaches the goal. But it's really dumb because it's always good radially, 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 in all directions. Let's have another example. So comment this guy and I'll comment this. Uh, let's make it half a second. Maybe this is. Oh, it's the same one. Oh, yeah, different because the, the walls are different. 
if you have uh, less walls, then you will explore more. May even take more time. Okay. One last thing I want to do with you. I actually didn't, you know, check uh, this this function. Any any questions so far? Any question? You guys are okay? Remember, I can't see the chat. Okay, so if there is yeah, a professor. question, yes. Uh, could you go back real quick to where you update the frontier distance step? I wasn't able to get the first two. Frontier. This one, right? Uh, yeah, that right there. Good. Thank you. Good. So, let's wanna. Yeah, okay. Let's assume that we are. Those ones, uh, the first and second, right? Yeah, those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whenever we explore a node, okay, let's assume that we are on on, on the start. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's assume we are here, okay, with a starting node, okay, and I will explore one, two, three, four. So. To explore one, two, three, four, I will go up, then right, then left, then down. So if I go up first, which is one, okay, I will make three tests. If this one inside the map, obviously it's inside the map. If it's a wall, it's not a wall. And if it's explored before, it's not explored before. Why? Basically because I just started, okay? There is no other information, or there is no other nodes in the uh, in this array other than the starting node, which is 2700. Just one row, and all other rows are just infinite. Okay, so I baked this this cell. I run the three tests, and it's okay. It's uh, I can add it to the to the array. It can I explored it. And it can be in the future become a frontier uh, frontier cell. Okay, so I need to add its ID. I need to add its distance from the starting node. I need to add uh, what else? I need to add also also its its exploration step. At which step I explored this node? Okay, the easiest one is the exploration step. The exploration step is the current step plus one. Okay, so before these three lines, I take the current step, I add, I added one. Where to put this exploration step? It, we put it in the third entry here. Okay, so the third entry is one. Okay. How we know basically the row at which I will put the information related to uh, this node, just look at the step. Okay, so the step here is one, although this is the second row. The step here, for another example, another cell is two, although this is a third row. The step is three, this is the fourth row. So the row that I am gonna put this information in, in is a step plus one. The same step, but at, at one point. So this is obvious or clear. Now the first two that you are asking about. Let's start by the first one. I need also in this second row, which I just bought the, the exclusion step in this in this in this entry here, in this cell. I need to put two other information: the ID of the cell and the distance from the start. The ID of the cell, the ID of this cell, if we go here, the ID of this cell is 26. Okay. How we could know it in here? 
we already we already knew it. We already calculated it when we make the three set the, the three set tests. So this is the ID located in the neighbor ID, the neighbor variable. So in the same row, which is a step plus one, which is the second row in this example, at the first entry here, put the value inside the neighbor, which is the ID of this neighbor, which is 26 in that case. In that case. Now I need to put the distance from the from the start. Okay. The distance from the start in general is equal to the distance from the start of my uh, my what? Of my frontier, the frontier that explored me. So I, I am now this node, node twenty six. Okay, I get it, Professor. I, uh, I got the... Okay, that's right? Yeah. Good. Any other question? I'm not seeing a chat, so please, you know. Okay. Let's see now, uh, and this is something that I'm doing with you, okay? So we just before it. So guys, you will just, you know, put your code here, okay, between these two lines and send me the code. I already put the assignment uh, on Canvas. You have one week, okay? And then uh, you have another assignment also based on Brits uh, first You will have many assignments, okay? At least two, or at most, sorry, at most two for each algorithm we take, at most. Okay, but let's do that first. Uh, for you that is very interested in that, I will ask you to convert this code into C. Okay. Why is that? When you code this in C, you will have, uh, you know, of course you will not have a GUI. It's really hard to do it there. You can do it, but it's really hard. So don't worry about that. But you can do the FIFO. You can use some of the cues in C++, for example. Okay, well, I'm sorry, C++, not C. Uh, so this, is, this will be the second assignment. So I will do it, I will assign it to you next week. But you know it from now, if you are interested, if you did this, if you have time, just to do that, just to convert this code into C. But in C, I want to see <laughs> the FIFO. I want to see the queue. Don't do it in the same way. This will not be acceptable. I will not accept this. This is uh, this your answer. I want to see your code using a FIFO, which we, which should be easier for you. Okay. Good. So let's now go to the last uh, step in here, which is this one here. So I want to hear to check if this is right or wrong. I I didn't check it by the way. I checked all the other stuff. I didn't, I didn't have, a, I didn't put an example to check if the code will really return an empty route or not, okay? So basically, if I will change now, I will make another map. I will put a wall between the start and the goal, okay? And I will do here, I would put here a breakpoint so that we will know if we are right or wrong, if we uh, pass this, if we, if the MATLAB could stop at this point, this break point. Okay, nice. So let's create an example in which we have, so let's do it based, for example, on, uh, on what? This is example three. Uh, this guy is easy, so let's, let's see. comment. Very easy to comment, you know, very easy. Then example four, no route, no route, okay. So create, yes, now for the, hmm. 
So seven and three, this is a start coordinate, seven and three. The goal is two and two is here. And this is the goal. So we can, for example, assign these five or these five, whatever, these nodes with, with obstacles. So I'm gonna assign, good. So here, copy and paste. So I'm gonna assign this row, this row, which is number four. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna assign for these four cells uh, obstacles or make them black or false or true in a book map. Okay, so this is the fourth row. And from, from this cell to this cell, this cell has a column of two. So this is the second column. And this cell has a column of five. So from two to five. So what's gonna here is that at column four, I'm sorry, at, at row four, columns two to five, just assign these cells or yes, this interest true. Okay, so let's here, not here. Uh, obstacle that you know looks start from goal. Okay, and let's see what's gonna happen. Hmm. We have yes. Uh, we should also do it inside. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is input map. I'm sorry. Okay. Good. Good. So, so let's let's see the graph again. So we explored all the nodes, okay? And when we reach it to this one, look, all of them has marked as red. All of them marked as uh, frontiers, which means that uh, for for each iteration, I I take one of them and explore it until I reach this guy, okay? And I found that uh, the node after it is just infinite. So, you know, it doesn't, there is no route. Okay. So guys, uh, any questions in this last step? Let me put it again. Okay. Uh, so this will, this end is the British first search. Okay, we understood it. I hope so. We knew how to implement it at least in MATLAB. Okay, this week you should implement the uh, shortest path. Okay, and the next week you should implement it in C, C++. I'm sorry, not C, C++. With no GUI, I will give you, uh, you know. Uh, a way to you know debug it something it's not a drawing okay but something will pop up in the command and not in the in the yeah the cmd window or whatever you call it the terminal window okay that will give you some hint about the steps that you are now in in your code okay and then when you construct the path we will use some uh, symbols to uh, show the path from the, instead of the gray, you know, path between the start and the goal, because the GUI permits that. Since we don't have a GUI in C, C++, then we will use some other symbols to, basically, we're gonna use the arrows, the left and down arrows. We're gonna use uh, V as going down, and we're gonna use the exponent as going up. So we can construct a path, not in a GUI, but as a, in the 
as a C out, okay? Using these four notations in here, going right, left, right, using the arrows. If you wanna go down, use V, the letter V. If you wanna go up, use the, the exponent, this you know, hat uh, notation or symbol in, on the keyboard, okay? So that's it, guys. So this is Brett's first search. Any, any questions? I finished, okay. <laughs> so uh, regarding the kits, I'm not sure I, I handled every paperwork uh, or submit all the paperwork needed from me, okay. I also told the Professor Melissa that there are four students that are living outside Bakersfield. So I am suggesting or assuming they gonna uh, make a drive through event. I'm not sure when, really not sure, okay. To the students living in Bakersfield to pick up the kids. And for those living outside Bakersfield, they gonna ship them, uh, the kids to them, okay. Maybe, maybe next week, this is also not done. So we're gonna again use the lab for coding, okay? And don't worry because we can make substitute from the lecture for the lab, that's fine. <laughs> so the, the, the course is two parts, okay? You can't say there is a lecture part and the lab part because we will do coding everywhere. Okay, so it's, it's a heavy coding uh, course. So this idea of lecture and lab is not that, you know, not that uh, descriptive for our course. Okay, so that's it. Any question before ending? Uh, professor, so for homework, we just have to do the shortest path. Right. Okay. Yes. Just fill in this, fill in this gap here between these two lines. Awesome, thank you. And if we have any questions, do we just email you or go to office hours? You have the, yeah, the office hours, uh, I may change. So this Thursday, we will have office hours, but I remember that the department meeting is actually on the same, it's bi-weekly on Thursday. So we are gonna have, <laughs> With the current office hours, we can have office hours one week and the next week after we will not have. We will not be able to. So I'm gonna change them. But at least for this week, we have office hours, okay? And of course you can email me in a time, okay? So, if I found that I can answer uh, texting using the email, I will reply. If it's not possible, I'll just, you know, okay, let's have a meeting on, on the office hours, on Zoom hours. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. So we'll see you tomorrow with the depth of research. Goodbye.